Hi everyone, my name is Danielle and I'm on Zapier's product marketing team. Wanted to take you through one of the workflows built by one of our senior RevOps specialists. Her name's Sarah. She works on the customer success side of the house. And this workflow is an AI generated cross-platform account summary. Essentially what this does is um, collates information from a bunch of systems, pulls in some AI summarization, and then drops it into either Slack or HubSpot. Customer info lives across several tools. We use Looker, Vitally, HubSpot, Full Story, Zendesk, etc. For our sales and success teams, that means that pre-call, they were spending ages trying to find the right info. And for other teams, like our user research team, for example, they couldn't find that info at all, either because they didn't have access to the right systems or they just didn't know where to find it. This had a negative impact in two big ways. Sales and success were going into conversations blind. They didn't have the right data and those conversations just weren't as personalized or impactful as they could have been. And if they were finding the info, their productivity went way down because it was at least 15 to 20 minutes of research pre-meeting for every single meeting. And when you've got five meetings a day, every day, that time adds up really quickly. For other teams, we're dropping into Slack and asking sales and success for account info, which is draining not just for the other teams, but also take sales and success away from what they should be focusing on, which is closing and retaining our customers. Here's the solution. An AI generated account summary with customer specific links. You can see an example here on the right. Big impact in two ways. One is increasing sales productivity because the reps don't have to hunt for info. They can focus on actually going in and having really great conversations with customers, working deals, et cetera. And the other is our win rate. When we're able to go into conversations with a really informed point of view, we can make great suggestions and ultimately close more customers and retain more customers. Here's a quick overview of how it works. So there's three roughly ways that this can be triggered. One is a slash command used in Slack. That's primarily used by teams like user research, product marketing, et cetera. I use this all the time. Two is a new deal lands in HubSpot. We'll do this automatically for every new deal that's created or a new customer account or deal in Vitaly. The next step here is to go and look up all of that information across tools. And finally, we throw it at AI. We ask AI to both summarize and format, but then we also ask AI to do some research for us. Competitors, what they're likely to care about based on their industry, top industry trends, etc. And then finally, those summaries are either shared back to Slack, they are put into HubSpot, which is where our sales team works out of so that it's right alongside all the info that they're already looking at when they're prepping for deals, or we share it into Vitaly, same story as sales, but with our success team. I wanted to start this off by showing you what it looks like in the wild. This is my Slack. So I'm gonna go eLookup and I'm gonna search myself. So you can see that attempt has gone through. Okay, I'll save you the elevator music. I just cut to the submission sharing back, but it took a couple minutes there. I get our account ID, plan name, company, and plan CS manage, sales owned, etc. You can see the AI summary. What does Zapier do? We're a global remote company that allows users to integrate their web applications, main competitors, challenges, automation potential, etc. You can see a Zendesk summary and then a whole bunch of customer links. I'm not gonna open these now, but if I were, I would go to our specific dashboard so that I could see our information. The couple that I think are going to be applicable to most folks, um, one is some kind of analytics, two is some kind of product monitoring, like a full story, really any product analytics tool. And then you can see Zendesk here as well. Let me show you what it looks like in HubSpot and then I'll show you how it works. I have dropped into Zapier's HubSpot. This is a, a test account, so don't worry about any real information in here. And this works by going to custom, you run the workflow by clicking this eLookup button, although I've heard Sarah call it her magic button before. So I go ahead and look it up. Now let's dive into activity. And I ran this earlier because this takes about 10 minutes to work, but you can see the note that was added here. So same thing, what does Zapier do, challenges, etc. Because we're using test data here, it's not 100% accurate, but you would see support tickets here and then any applicable links as well. The biggest thing that I would share about the system is that it's so extensible. Our support team does something very similar where in Zendesk, they'll pull a list of things like, is the account success owned? And how much do they pay? And when was their last billing date? So there's a, a bunch of ways that you could package this up and make it really valuable for your team.
Let's dive into how it works. So you are looking at a canvas. If you haven't used canvas yet, it is by far my favorite Zapier tool. We've got loosely three categories of zaps that do all essentially the same thing. One is automatically when a new deal is created or a customer becomes CSM owned or something else happens that indicates that this account or company or contact might be ready for a summary. The second is when a rep or someone else needs this information, they can either push that button that I just showed you in HubSpot or they can fill out an interfaces form. This one though shares it back into Slack. And then finally, that last one, and I think the one that is used by far the most, if I'm being honest, is that slash command that I just showed you in Slack. Now, setting up slash commands in Slack are just a little bit more challenging than using something like a React G or a form. If you don't want to use a slash command, then I would recommend using an interface. You could also use your form provider of choice. That being said, I do think the slash command is nice. So because these apps are all essentially identical, I'll take you through this one and then one of the HubSpot ones. All right, here's the zap. There's a little Easter egg in the top as well. This app starts by catching the webhook from the Slack app. It could also start with that form submission if you decide to go that route. The next step is to remove any formatting or spaces, etc. cetera. Um, Sarah used an extract pattern step here, but you could absolutely use something that just removes the spaces off the end or removes any bolding, etc. It depends what formatting is added to your text as it comes through. This next step is a search into our internal backend and it pulls the associated plan, plan interval and plan amount. Again, you could absolutely use HubSpot if this information is in HubSpot. It really just depends on where your info lives. Because this step is looking for the user based on email, there's a chance that it returns could not find anything. And so that's where you would go down these paths. If you don't find anything, then this app sends a DM saying that we couldn't find the user. However, if we can find the user, then we'll go ahead and we'll encode that email for use in customer links. For anyone who's not familiar with encoding, there's sometimes just a little bit of a finicky formatting requirement in particular for HubSpot notes, but it can apply across the board. We will find the date five days ago from the day that this runs so that we can find the task range for the last five days, find today's date, do some other general formatting here. So things split the email, format the URLs, et cetera. And then this is where we start to look up the information. So all of our Zendesk tickets are also pulled through to Looker. We use Looker for all of our analytics and it also houses information like support tickets. You could absolutely use a lookup step for Zendesk. The reason that we don't is Zendesk currently doesn't have an action that would allow us to look up multiple support tickets. However, it is possible if you take a peek at the Zendesk API docs. If you'd like to use a multiple search lookup for Zendesk, API requests is going to be your best bet. By the way, if you're non-technical, nothing more satisfying than getting your code steps to work. Okay, so if you do choose to use Looker, Looker auth token, they expire after an hour. We have a step here to generate a Looker auth token. Because it expires so quickly, we need a new one every single time we do this. And then we go ahead and look up those Zendesk tickets in Looker. For code steps in particular, ChatGPT is your friend. And finally, we just go ahead and truncate them to make sure that we're not sending very, very long tickets into the OpenAI steps. These next two steps are pretty important. One of them will summarize those Zendesk tickets. You give it the output of the last step and the prompt here essentially says, provide a brief summary of the support tickets from the last 90 days. Give us a few bullets that just give the high level overview. We'll give you this open AI step to copy as well. And then the next one is some AI magic. Extract the company name from this email based on the domain. Tell me what this company does, who their main competitors are, what their industry specific challenges are, and then describe how automation could benefit this company. A couple of useful tips and tricks whenever you're writing prompts, in particular, those that are going in Zap, putting some rules. And so this one says, add too much fluff or explanation, return your responses in this format, etc. The next few steps look up things like the account owner and whether it's a sales or success owned account. 
So we'll go ahead and find the contact in HubSpot. If it doesn't exist in HubSpot, we'll return all the information we've gathered so far. You can see what that looks like here. This is where we construct all of the links. And so really all that you need is to know the format, then you can go ahead and put those together. So that's if it does not exist in HubSpot. If it does exist in HubSpot, then we'll do a little bit more work here. Next up is this code step. This step is to find the top paying account. And the reason that we do that is we'll often have maybe one pro account, one team account, and then a dozen or more free accounts. We want to be returning the top paying account. You can see get account IDs, split the account IDs, some formatting here, a little bit of error handling, and then we do some HubSpot work. So this will find custom object properties with HubSpot record ID. This is looking for anything and everything that is associated with that account ID. Some formatting to say, is this account CSM managed? Is this account sales managed? And finally, the image that I showed you when I showed you the response in Slack, this is what it looks like. So plan ID, plan name, plan amount, interval, CS managed, sales managed, et cetera. And same as a few steps back, you've also got all of those customer links formatted here. Those will show up as hyperlinks in, okay. 27 steps later, and we have saved the team a ton of time. I'll walk you through the HubSpot one at a higher level. If we dive back into the canvas though, let's take a look at customer summarizer HubSpot deals. You can see that this one is created anytime a new deal is created in HubSpot that fits certain parameters. HubSpot notes are very particular about the formatting. And so you'll notice a lot of formatting steps throughout this. You'll notice a lot of webhooks in this app. And that's because we use webhooks instead of the create engagement action in HubSpot. That being said, you could absolutely still use create engagement. The only difference is that there's no way to update engagement. This app is a little slow. It takes about 10 minutes to fully pull through. And you saw that when I showed you the HubSpot, it's only just now finally updated. And so what we've done to manage the amount of time that it takes to put something into HubSpot, the very first thing that it does is it'll post a note that says, we've received your request, we're working on it essentially. And so that makes the team feel confident that they are going to get the info. It's just going to take a moment versus questioning whether or not it worked. That's what this step does. This webhook will create that initial confirmation note, and then it will take that note and associate it to a deal in HubSpot. The next few steps are finding associated HubSpot properties or contacts or deals, etc. And then same as the last app I shared, we'll go ahead and get that Looker auth token, get our Zendesk ticket history, summarize those tickets, get that company info, and then format it. We'll then go ahead and update that note in HubSpot so that the team has some information somewhat right away. If they already have a Zapier account, this app will continue. And if they don't, it will stop here. We'll go ahead and find the associated Zapier account and we'll do that in HubSpot. We'll find the sales and success owner. And again, we're doing that via webhook just because it's a little bit more custom, but you could absolutely do it using the built-in HubSpot action. And then has a Zapier account, yes or no. This is essentially acting as a filter. We'll find the top Zap titles in Looker. This is looking for automation opportunities. And so it will pull a list of Zaps in the last five days that were active. We'll use ChatGPT to synthesize those. You can see the prompt here. It's very straightforward. Provide one sentence on this account's use case of Zapier based on their Zap titles and provide one sentence on suggestions you have for how they can expand their use case on Zapier, plus some formatting details. We will look up the customer in Vitaly, do some general formatting. Again, HubSpot notes are quite finicky about formatting. And then we'll go ahead and update the note in HubSpot, associate it to the account and associate it to the content. This one's a little longer because of all those HubSpot steps, but it's essentially the same Zap, just duplicated and modified a little bit for this specific use case. If we dive back into the canvas, these other Zaps do essentially the same thing with a little bit of specification for where they start and then where the note is eventually posted. One more thing before I close out, this is very much a legacy system, which means that we've built on it as we've learned and identified additional opportunities. If I was to burn this down and start from scratch, here's what I would do. Step number one, you want to decide how your Zap should be triggered. However, if you think there's a world where you might need multiple triggers, I'd recommend using subzaps and putting all of your lookup and AI steps in the subzap. 
I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec, but the reason I like to build systems like that is they're really extensible. It's really easy to add on additional triggers, additional places to post it, etc. And you're not copying and pasting every single time you want to expand on the system. Step number two is figure out which info you'd like to include. We recommend just asking your team. They will tell you what's annoying to find, what's hard to find, and what would be useful for them. Three, incorporate AI. Are there other industry related fields that would be helpful, competitors, use cases, etc.? Are there any specific recommendations that your team regularly gives and could AI help to preempt those so that they can give better recommendations? Finally, and this will always be my last step, test, publish, and make sure everything is running smooth. Now, here's what this could look like if you do it using a subs app. You would essentially have one zap, which is your trigger, whether it's a form submission, Slack, et cetera. And then you'll either send it to a webhook or a subs app to a subs app, which has essentially the meat of this workflow. So if I'm looking at the examples that we went through today, what you would probably want to include in the subs app is the Zendesk ticket history, the summarize, the company info, what are they paying? Are they CS or sales owned, et cetera. Having all of that in one zap that you can call from many zaps means that if you have to update that info, it's really easy and you don't have to do it a million times. And then finally, at the end of this, you'll have a return from sub zap step, which will send it back to the initial zap that it came in. From. And that's when you can post to HubSpot, post to Slack, post to Vitaly, etc. With that, I really hope this was helpful. Don't hesitate with any questions and have a fantastic rest of your day.